Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel. Welcome to another video. Before we start the video, I completely forgot this last week, but um, right now, Heroes of Loot 2 can be pre-ordered on Switch and it comes with a little discount. Let me. Heroes of Loot 2, um, get it on Switch right now, 10% discount. It will launch on uh, February the 7th, which I think is one or two weeks from now, as you see the video. Um, it plays amazing on Switch. Um, it's, I think uh, it's still a big improvement over Heroes of Loot 1, although a lot of people love 1. Uh, 2 just brings a lot more quests and dungeons and um, it plays amazing. You can play it with two players, local co-op, both uh, get one of these sticks and play it with a friend, buddy, a relative, uh, uh, an enemy and maybe become friends. It's all possible. So uh, check out uh, Heroes of Loot 2 on the Switch. Just open your Switch right now. Search for Heroes of Loot and you'll find it. And while you do that, let's watch the intro and then we'll start the video. All right, I'll play a little game while you uh, do all that. So this week was pretty interesting um, for me as a developer because I got to work on a trigger system. I already had a trigger system in the game, Regulator City, uh, but the trigger system needed uh, more triggers and also a lot more stuff being hooked into that trigger system. So what this means is a trigger system is pretty much uh, a little event that happens and any entity in the game that is interested in such an event just checks for it if it happens and if they're part of that event within a certain area of the event they will do something. All right so a little example of that um, we have a pickup player um, sorry if you're very young and have no idea what a pickup player is or an album playing device we used to listen to music on it. Anyway, they are in the game and um, you can now turn them on and it will trigger a sound on event, which is just a little thing that happens. But if there is a speaker nearby, you know, those things that you know what a speaker is even. If there's a speaker nearby, it will see this event, this trigger, and it will then start playing music. And it will then create another trigger, which is an attract enemy trigger. And if there's an enemy nearby, it will uh, be attracted by that sound and will start walking towards the speaker. All very interesting. Why are we talking about this? Because you can now uh, turn on a pickup player. It will start playing music on the speaker nearby and it will attract enemies towards that speaker. Of course, this allows you to either uh, kill them from behind or from a cover area or uh, just avoid them and sneak past them. That's just a simple example. There are a lot of other triggers now I'm just going to boot up the game and show you a little bit of all these triggers happening and uh, talk you through some of them. Sounds like a good plan. Here we go. Let's start a new game and let's uh, pick a random one. I like this one. Let's uh, quickly do a little cheating and move into an apartment uh, level that I kind of prepared or tested most of these things in. So um, what we have here is a pickup player in the game. It will be on the crate and here we have a speaker. We're going to turn on uh, the pickup player and I just I had to do this before. I want these guys to be a little bit away from there so we can actually lure them in. So we'll place them over here and hope that they stay there a little bit. And we we'll place another one there and we'll make that one a random. So there can be a three or two guys depending on the randomness. And let's um, enter the building. All right, so we'll do very quietly enter this. And then as you can see, these guys are over there now in the corner. This is all silence. And we will now activate the pickup player and hopefully lure the enemies. There they come and they are moving towards us and we can um, take them down. Of course, we could have also run away from this and lure them over there and then find another route to uh, wherever we want to go. So let me also show you the triggers that are happening. Uh, all the purple boxes or pinkish, purplish, those are triggers. Um, obviously, our characters are also triggering events. Uh, we are an entity, we're a player. So uh, these little things are being triggered everywhere. And let me turn off the pickup player. 
which uh, you saw it flash, which is a big purple square, and that's the sound off trigger. And then a speaker will notice that's the trigger, and then of course it will turn off. Let me do it again, and you'll notice it, it blinks pretty quickly because it's only like two or three frames um, of the 60 frames per second. So um, let me show you again. There it was again. Um, there are more triggers like that. We have a washing machine over here. We can turn it on. And it will also do a loud noise trigger. Of course, right now it doesn't really attract anybody because it's in a room where nobody is. Uh, the same can be done with television sets. We can turn on television sets. It will attract people. It will be uh, lighting up the area a little bit. And the same can be done to uh, lights. And over here we have another pickup player. But we don't have any live guys because we are killing them before. We can lure them. And another event. As you can see, um, it's going to be interesting for level design to make this um, very interesting tactical wise. You want to place the enemies in a certain spot and the pick a player and such uh, items in a certain spot that the player can use them in a tactical way. Uh, that's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be uh, fun to do as well. Now, besides all these triggers, I also added this new device and we already had it but it wasn't functional this is now the power generator for the whole level so you can uh, try to find this one and then you can deactivate it and power will go off in the whole level this will have the advantage that the enemies won't see you as quickly unless they have like a night vision goggles but most of them won't so you'll be able to sneak around everything and uh, it will be a lot easier to take down enemies because they won't see you coming as quickly and uh, if you're done, you can then turn on the power again, which will be another trigger and everything will turn on again. And um, that's been the trigger system that I've been working on. Oh, actually, there's one more thing I've been adding. Besides triggers, I also needed... Um, let me find a funny level. This should do. Um, let's play it. I also needed a light system. So let me activate lights. You'll now see these yellow squares and that's um, light zones. So near lamps and things like that, there will be light. And that means an enemy will be able to detect you a lot better. So this ties into the system of turning on and off all the lights or TVs or whatever creates light. Um, you can turn it off and it will make you less visible by the enemy. Again, there will be enemies with night vision, obviously. Um, but that's a new system I had to implement. So there's a lot of system work this week, which is visually uh, less interesting, except when I turn on all the debug stuff. But um, yeah, it had to be done because now we can actually start building a bunch of interactive systems and connect everything and start working on making those missions tactical and interesting. So trigger system, um, it's pretty easy. And last week I started doing a little bit of a sort of tech talk on this channel about things like this, high level stuff. How does it work? How, what's the logic behind it? So uh, let me show you the logic behind triggers. It's very simple stuff. It's um, triggers. Yeah, the code for the triggers are pretty simple. Uh, we have a bunch of different trigger types and names. Um, and what a trigger pretty much does is it creates um, a square of course this can also be a circle but i like squares um, it creates a square and it will just uh, live for a couple of frames and if it's uh, had its lifetime it dies and it's gone again that's that this is the whole trigger system and it sounds very impressive but this is all all it this is it um it's more the, all the code that interacts with triggers um and of course, figuring out the right kind of triggers and some uh, entities will respond to multiple triggers, all that stuff. But uh, this is pretty much it. And it's a very simple class. It doesn't do anything. Triggers don't move around. Triggers, well, they could move around, I guess, but usually they don't. They happen in a certain spot. It will attract the entity. They will have a link to their source. So the entity can check where did it come from? And is it interesting to us? Because if an enemy creates a loud noise, other enemies shouldn't really respond to it or might not respond to it. So you want to know where the trigger uh, came from, what the source is, and that's all it does. So even though it's very simple to implement these triggers, um, I spend most of my week 
working on it and getting it all up and running, mostly because I needed a system so that I can easily tie things or trigger events uh, to all the types of furniture and entities and items in the game. I don't want to do it for every type, so I want to have a very simple way of tying everything into it, so it all had to work in the right way. Uh, problems I ran into, uh, turning on the pickup player would create an event that would turn on the speaker, which would create an event that turned off the pickup player, which would create an event turning off the speaker. It ping ponged between those. Uh, same with lights, you would turn on a light, but then something else turned off and then that light would turn on again because um, they were listening to the same type of triggers while also firing those triggers. It's all uh, up and running now and it works pretty cool. So now it's uh, hooking up all these things uh, to triggers and of course level design wise, figuring out interesting ways to uh, use all those triggers. So right now that means we can start creating levels and design them in such a way that you can turn on things or turn off things and that it then uh, maybe attracts enemies or makes sure enemies can't see you and that you can then sneak past them or uh, that you get closer to them and can take them out without too much effort. Things like that. It will be fun and interesting to try and come up with interesting levels and um, I hopefully will be able to provide that level editor to at least the PC version of the game so that people can make levels because it could be interesting to see what other people do with this. Um, I think there's still a little bit of time. I did one more thing, talked about it on the Discord a little bit. Um, let me just show you. That's probably easier. I'll just show you in the game. It's pretty cool. Right, so as I mentioned last week, we have security cameras that, are, uh, that will detect you and then enemies have to spawn in somehow. And I was spawning them uh, at this door out of nowhere. That didn't really work and I wanted something better. Um, one idea on the Discord was uh, having them repel into the level enemies from above. Um, so I did that. Let me just take out these guys and then uh, we'll try to get into the camera. And there we go. The rope drops and new enemies drop in. Uh, let me do that again. There it comes. There they are. And we can take them out. And every time you get noticed or run into the camera, um, they will come in. Of course, right now it's just always from the rope, but we'll mix it up with uh, coming in from doors that are off screen maybe. I might come up with a couple of others, but I don't want to use teleportation. Uh, one thought I had is that they may be a burst through walls like this, outer walls, and we have one over here and on that side. Maybe they'll just, uh, there will be an explosion with rocks coming out of here and then a couple of enemies running in and then trying to come towards you. Uh, yeah, that's probably one of the things I'll be working on next because um, I'm working on those spawn events and um, I think it could be an interesting one to have some debris flying as they jump in. Maybe even if you're indoors in an apartment, this rope coming down could also have some uh, window shattering and debris bouncing on the floor before they drop. Um, that's actually a nice addition I might start adding to the game. So that rope dropping in is a Verlay integration system. Um, I figured all that stuff out for residual, having all those vines that you could swing on. Uh, so right now for this game, it was a matter of copy and pasting that code into this game. And it was up and running in five minutes. I just then had to uh, improve on the animation and tidy it all up. And that took more than 30 minutes. But the whole system was there and it was pretty easy to implement. This is also why I keep telling other developers uh, or younger developers or learning developers, don't try to do a bunch of new things in every new game. Uh, learn one or maybe two new, new things for your game. And in my case for residual, that was this rope, this rope physics type stuff. Um, and now I get to uh, profit from all that time invested in it because for this game it was very easy. For this game I actually learned all the AI code and doing artificial intelligence and having guys move around in an almost intelligent way and I will take all that information up to the next game or whenever I do another game that needs stuff like this I'll have a lot of information and knowledge on how to create such a thing. And that's all I've been doing this week. A trigger system, a light map and all that stuff and then a little rope drop in animation which wasn't a lot of work but I needed some visual stuff and visual funny things to show in this video. So these videos actually help me build games because I need to figure out what am I going to talk about at the end of the week. I better make sure I have something. 
And I think I had something this week. So I hope you liked it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below and all that stuff. Uh, drop down the Discord, please. And finally, get Heroes of Loot 2 on your Switch. It would mean a lot to both me, but also Sirius Lion, again, on the Discord, who does all the porting for my games to consoles. And if you buy these games, you support me, you support him, you support this channel, and you also get a awesome game to play. So um, buy it on the Switch, check it out now, it's there. It gives you a 10% discount if you buy it before February the 7th. And um, enjoy the game. And let me know what you think about the game. Let me know what you think about the video. And I will see you next week. So thanks for watching, bye. Thank you.